Hello, this is Dan Pearl. Welcome to my rigging channel and another Bunder rigging tutorial. This is part one of a new series where I'm going to attempt to show you some tips, tricks, and techniques on how to create a better uh, or more advanced deformation system. So I have a couple of characters on the screen right now. They are identical meshes with nearly identical rigs, although the one on the right has basically a standard deformation rig and the one on the left has some Dan Pearl upgrades, let's say. So hopefully you will agree that the one on the left is uh, a little bit more appealing and it looks a little bit more natural a lot more volume preservation things look like they're moving and reacting um, the way they should so I want to show you some simple ways where you can get a deformation system that's going to uh, be more natural give the animator more control over their mesh and just get uh, overall better deformations better transitions better volume preservation um, better muscle definition and so on so I'm going to be splitting this up into multiple different pieces so we can tackle common deformation problems and then we can just solve them with simple solutions and then we can combine them all at the end in order to create a final solution. So I'm going to be mainly concentrating on the hips, thighs, knees, and the shin area, but these techniques and tricks can be basically used in any other area of your creature or character rigs. So the very first thing that I want to show you is a soccer rig. And uh, the soccer rig is actually not something that's going to deform our mesh, but it's going to be instrumental in helping us create a squash and stretch style rig where we can kind of push and pull anything that we need to push and pull on our characters or creatures to make them deform correctly. We can get into some other things later, such as weight painting and topology and some of the other more advanced techniques. So let's start with the socket rig. So let's start off and talk about why we need a socket rig and what it's going to do for us. So there's going to be multiple areas of a rig and it's going to happen over and over. We're going to need a bone that is parented to another bone, but we don't want to transfer all of the transforms. So we don't want to transfer the location or we don't want to transfer the scale or we don't want to transfer the rotation or any combination of those um, down the chain. So for example, on the hips, there's going to be a lot of times where I'm going to want to scale the hips on the X axis in order to get some of the volume back in the mesh, but I don't want that scaling to scale the legs because that's actually going to look horrible or scale the rest of the upper body as well. There's also going to be a situation when I rotate this where I don't, I want the leg to follow the hip, but I don't want it to follow its rotation. So because the leg is a child of the hip, it's going to inherit the location, rotation, and scale automatically. If we go over to the bone properties over here, and you find in the relationships tab that our leg bone, let me get the end panel out here, our leg.001, its parent is the spine.001, that is that one right here, and it is set to inherit the rotation, inherit scale, and uh, inherit the location. Now, like I mentioned, I don't want it to inherit the rotation or the scale. Now, you might be tempted to uncheck these boxes and this will actually work or it will seem to work at first, but I'll show you why this is a bad example. So if we uncheck this, you'll see that if I scale this on the x-axis, it's not going to scale the leg, even though the, I mean, the position of it is going to move a little bit because of the scaling, but it's not going to scale all the way down the leg. I can also rotate this and that leg will stay in position. Its, it's location will stay stuck, but it won't inherit the rotation. Now this is actually what I want, but I don't want to use these checkboxes. And the reason I don't want to use those checkboxes is because even though it's not inheriting the rotation and the scale of the spine like I want, it's also not inheriting the location and rotation of the root bone. <laughs> and I actually want it to do that. So the root bone is actually a very important bone in the rig. And although I'm not going to take time right now to show you why that's very important, you can actually go to an older tutorial I have in the Rigify ser um, series. It's part 8, I believe, and it's the first one of part 8, part 8A. And it will show you the importance of the root bone. So you can go look at me him-haw around about that one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very quick, and I kind of ramble a little bit. But anyways, you can see why the uh, you don't want to use this particular method you don't want to disconnect your bones from the root bone. So we will leave these checked and I will show you how to create a socket rig. Now like I mentioned this is going to come up over and over whenever we want a child bone to act as a child but only on certain transforms we can use this type of rig. So I'm going to select the leg.001 
make sure that I'm in edit mode on my armature, do shift D, and that's going to create a, an exact duplicate, and then S to scale it. I'm going to create that duplicate, just scale it way down. I'll rename this to MCH leg socket. Now MCH leg socket is parented to spine.001 because I duplicated from the leg that was parented to that. I'm going to duplicate that again and scale it up just a little bit. And I'm going to change the name of this from MCH leg socket to MCH leg parent. Now I'm going to parent the actual leg bone, leg.001, to that parent bone. Control P, keep offset. But I'm going to parent MCH leg parent not to the hip, but to the root bone. So I'll select the root, Control P, keep offset. Now I'm back in pose mode. Let's see what happens here. If I move that uh, spine around or rotate it, I've got the socket is inheriting the location, rotation, and scale but the leg's not following it. And that is because I need to have the leg parent only copy the transforms that I want. So I'm going to select leg socket, shift select leg parent, and then I'm going to only copy the location because I don't want to transfer the scale or the rotation. So copy location. We can leave it at world space and world space. And now we should have exactly what we want. I can rotate this, although the it's not going to copy, the leg isn't going to copy the rotation. I can scale it on the x-axis, and it's not going to copy that scale. And there we go. That is a simple socket rig. And again, this is going to come up over and over and over when you have parent-child relationships, and you want to disconnect certain transforms from other parts of the rig. One additional benefit that we have when we set up our socket rig in this way where we're not we're only transferring the transforms that we want down our parent-child um, chain is because we are using constraints, we can actually turn the influence slider of those constraints on and off. So there's going to be some instances, not very often, but sometimes when I might want the um, leg bone to actually copy the rotation of the hip bone. So in this instance, I can just add a copy rotation constraint along with my copy location constraint. So I will select MCH leg socket, shift select MCH leg parent and do shift control C add copy rotation and now with the influence slider when I want the leg to copy the rotation of the hip I can leave the influence on one and when I don't want it to happen I can just turn it down to zero and in this way I have a switchable way to transfer the transforms down the parent child um, chain now uh, in a larger rig, I wouldn't make the animator come in here and turn this influence slider on and off. We would use a driver on the influence slider and then set up a custom property on a bone um, that and the animator would have more access to. So usually the MCH bones are hidden and on a hidden layer. Um, so if you want more information on how to set up drivers and custom properties for influence sliders on basically any constraint that you have in your rig, you can take a look at a tutorial that I did earlier on my facial rig tutorial series and it's number six I believe and it's called custom properties and it'll show you all the details on how to do that so I won't have to go through that information here so that is it for the socket rig again we're gonna be using this over and over until next time I hope these tips help good luck